Good morning, everybody. The Philippine Ministerial School of Ecclesiastical Law, in partnership with the Leaders Institute for Fruitful Empowerment, may I introduce to you my classmates, or what we call the class Pagbabago. Allow me to present to you Ephesians 2.10, and it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Allow me to present to you some verses before our main topic, which is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Grace chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. And Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Grace has given us all spiritual blessings through Jesus. Grace has determined that we will be like Jesus and with Jesus one day, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, and verses 11 to 12. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 it says, Grace has made us accepted in Jesus. Grace proved the blood of Christ that washed us from our sins in Ephesians 1 7. In Ephesians 2 1 4, Grace reached out to us when we were dead in our sins and headed to hell. In Ephesians 2, 4 it says, Grace loved us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, it says, Grace has secured our future. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, it says, Grace has secured our salvation. The verse before us today is about the work of grace in our lives. This verse tells us what the Lord does in us when He saves us and how He works through us to accomplish His will in the world. This verse is a challenge to all of the members of this legal counseling class to be the examples of grace he saved us to be. Let's notice the thoughts mentioned in this verse as I try to discuss about the workmanship of grace. Point Number one, a word about workmanship. Paul begins this verse by saying, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. The words in the Bible are very important. I believe that God inspired every word in the Bible, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I believe that when we study a passage, we need to take the time to look at the words in that passage. The words in the first part of this verse are vital to understanding its importance and meaning. Let's take a few minutes to examine these words together. The word workmanship means that which is made a work, a work of art. It comes from the word that gives us the word poem. It refers to a piece of literary workmanship. It came to refer to an author's magnum opus or his greatest literary achievement. In other words, it refers to his masterpiece. 
Paul is saying that the redeemed saints of God are God's masterpieces. The saints are the greatest work of the master pattern. The saints are the greatest letter ever written by the hand of the master author. The redeemed saints of God are the result of God's loving industry. We are saved because He took the shapeless, dead clay of our lives in His loving, powerful hands and He molded us into something new for His glory. With loving care and infinite skill, God shaped us by His grace and wrote His love into our lives. In 2 Corinthians 5.5 it says, Now He that hath wrought us for the self-same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. The word wrath in that verse means to fashion. We are His workmanship. When you start to think about the raw materials God has to work with when He saves sinners and changes lives, it all becomes far more incredible. R. Kent Hughes gives the following illustration. Michael Angelo was once asked what he was doing as he chipped away at a shapeless rock. He replied, I'm liberating an angel from this stone. That's what God is doing with us. We are in the hands of the great maker, the ultimate sculptor who created the universe out of nothing, and he has never yet thrown away a rock on which he has begun a masterwork. All around this chat room are living, breathing testimonies to the life-changing power of God. All around this chat room sit the examples of His workmanship. All around this chat room sits the tangible evidence that God makes a new thing when He saves us all. God is a master craftsman. He took something worthless and transformed into something of infinite value. My question now is, are we really performing that we are God's masterpieces? And as I have told before, life begins when you step out of your comfort zone, there is no progress inside the comfort zone. In the wedding, papetics, petics, pa relax, relax. Ayaw mo nang lumago, ayaw mo lumago sa yung comfort zone. Paano ka lalago? Point number two. A word about works. The child of God will evidence a life that is occupied with deeds that reflect well on the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. God's desire is that every one of His redeemed saints bears fruit to His glory. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 it says that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all 
blessing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Right now, what are we doing to improve our financial standing? Are we doing something? Or are we still in our comfort zone? Right now, what are we doing to improve our communication skills? Are we doing something? Or we don't want to leave our comfort zone? Right now, do we have an intentional evangelistic program? Deliberate discipleship program? Or we are still stuck into that old, 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 old Jurassic program that delivers no progress. Right now, can we prepare a comprehensive church business plan? Or up to now, you do not know what business plan is all about. Right now, can we do online training, preaching, using PowerPoint? Or oh, up to now, you're still a computer lizard and you don't want to get out from that comfort zone. Up to now, boka boka pa rin. Oh my Lord. Point number three. A word about our walk. Referring to those good works, Paul says, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. God expects His people to walk in good works. The word walk means to make one's way, to regulate one's life to make full use of opportunities. It refers to a fixed way of life that is committed to living the way God intends for His people to live. How does God expect His people to walk? They have to walk in love according to John chapter 13 verse 35, Romans 5.5, 5, and 1 Corinthians 13. They have to walk in obedience according to John chapter 14 verse 15 and verse 21. They, they should walk in faithfulness according to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 and they should walk in holiness according to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16 Once a little boy was acting up in his Sunday school class and his roadway ways were really frustrating his teacher. Sino kaya yung little boy na yun? I'm sure, makakarelate kayo. Sabi ng teacher, Why do you act like that? Don't you know who made you? Sabi ng pilyong bata, God did, but He isn't finished with me yet. Kinalate nga siya ng Diyos, pero hindi pa rin tapos yung pag-ayos sa kanya na yung Diyos. Sino ba yung pili yung batang yun? That's why, that's the truth. We are all a work in progress. But I have it on good authority that God will finish what He started in our lives. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you 
will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ according to Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 As we close please consider this Magmula nung nag-aral tayo ng legal counseling course Meron na ba tayong ginawa upang ang ating natutunan ay ituro sa iba? O para lang tayong dead sea, tanggap lang lang tanggap, pero wala naman tayong outlet? Tanda lamang, we are the catalyst for change. And together, we shall make a difference.